Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about turning min priority queues into max priority queues. This is part two of five in the priority queue series. So you may already be asking yourself, why is it important that I know how to convert a min priority queue into a max priority queue? Well, here's the problem. Often in the standard library of most programming languages, they will only provide you with either a max priority queue or a min priority queue. Usually it's a min priority queue, which sorts elements by the smallest element first, but sometimes we need the max priority queue depending on what we're programming. So how do we do this? How do we convert one, prior, one type of priority queue into another type? Well, a hack we can use is to abuse the fact that all elements in a priority queue must implement some sort of comparable interface, which we can simply negate or invert to get the other type of heap. Let's look at some examples. Suppose for a moment that we have a priority queue consisting of elements that are on the right side of this screen, and that these are in a min priority queue. So if x and y are numbers in the priority queue, and x is less than or equal to y, then x will come out of the priority queue before y. The negation of this is x is greater than or equal to y. And so y then comes out before x, because all these elements are still in the priority queue. Wait a moment, you say. Isn't the negation of x is less than or equal to y just x greater than y, and not x is greater than or equal to y? Well, not for comparators. You see, if x is equal to y, whether or not the comparator is negated, x should still equal y. So now, let's see what happens when we pull all these elements out of the priority queue with our negated comparator. So first we would get 13, because it's the greatest, and next comes 11, 7, 5, 3, and 2. An alternative method for numbers is to negate the number before you insert it and negate it again when it comes out. This is a hack specific to numbers, but it's pretty nice. So let's see how that works. So let's negate all the numbers inside our priority queue. And now we can see that definitely minus 13 is the smallest, so it should come out first. So minus 13 indeed comes out first, but now we have to re negate it and we get 13. Everything is good so far. Next is minus 11, so really positive 11, and so on, minus 7, 7, and so on, just so keep polling and then renegate the value to get it out of uh, the priority queue. It's a pretty neat hack. Okay, now let's look at another examples using strings. So suppose lex is a comparator for strings, which sorts strings in lexiographic order. This is the default for most programming languages. Then let's call nlex be the negation of lex. And also let's assign S1 and S2 to be some non-null strings. So below you can see that our comparator assigns minus 1 if S1 is less than S2 lexiographically, 0 if they're equal lexiographically, and plus 1 if S1 is greater than S2 lexiographically. And then nlex is just the negation of that. So just to break it down, lex sorts strings lexicographically, but we're interested in negating lex so that longer strings appear before so shorter strings, and also that strings with letters at the end of the alphabet appear before those containing letters uh, at the beginning of the alphabet. I think I said that right. This would, in effect, turn a min heap into a max heap. Let's look at a concrete example. So by adding all the numbers on the right to our prior queue with a lexiographic comparator, here's the ordering we should expect. First we get A, because it's 
the shortest string that has characters appearing closer closest to the start of the alphabet. Then it comes out B, then F Z, then X, then XR and XX. So now let's do the same thing but with N Lex. And we should hopefully obtain the opposite sequence in reverse order. And then we get XX, XR, X, F, Z, B, and A. So it did exactly what we intended it to do. So that's all there is to converting min heaps to max heaps or max heaps to min heaps, vice versa. You guys are now pros. You're awesome. In the next video, we're going to look at how to add elements to a priority queue. Also, if you're interested in the source code implementation for Priority Queue, check out the link below at the bottom of the screen. I should also have a link in the description to the GitHub repo with all these data structures. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.